Oh my god. We've been taken over by pugs. Oh my god. It's the invasion of the pug. So many <laughs> pugs. Oh, the pig. He's like, why you do this? <laughs> right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Bye, Buster. <laughs> Bye, Buster. <laughs> Buster indignantly wanders off. Buster's had enough of our shit already. Yeah. Yep. Already. <laughs> He's already reached capacity. Uh, we started oh, early. Done with you humans. It is July 26th, and we're oh streaming God. stuff. Really? It's July 26th? It's July 20-fucking-6th. Oh wow. And we had a thunderstorm today. Yeah. That was cool. And it was epic. Yeah, and then, like, this... I don't know how bad it was out here, but, like, out in my place, like, there was a huge dump of rain. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Such heavy rain. I got caught in that rain. And we had, like, four heavy dumps of rain. It was yeah. nuts. Um, today, well... I'm going to color this so I can finally put it up all finished and pretty like for the $10 patrons. Um, cuckoo. We're going to go back to basics as far as topics, though. So we're going to uh, do our old motif of uh, talking about stories of stuff that's happened to us and embarrassing stuff and injuries. And I assume that we have more new people watching, maybe? Uh, Maybe we should wait until officially seven, and maybe a little well, bit. Well, everybody's getting that. emails right now saying, "Yeah, um, so we can." Uh, however, if you notice, I finally kind of figured out how to work the internet machine. <laughs> so below the stream, you should see information that we no longer have to give you at the end of the stream. Hooray! Yay! Won't that be nice? And as predicted, nice. it took all of ten minutes of my <laughs> life, <laughs> but I was so scared to even attempt it. Yep. Uh, it's a good shirt, right, Busted? I love this shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a thing. I'm proud of myself. I count that as a win today. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's I guess good. I made a comment today, but... <laughs> well, you know. Uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna work on this. I might right. get you guys' input as to color palettes. Um... Because it's a maroon and a pink gem. Mm. So I'm guessing a purple motif. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, not But I might chime in and get you guys' uh, ideas I on skin tones. I might go know. more pink than, like, I mean, still purple, but I might... In the uh, reds rather than yeah, the blues? Yeah, I, I might, yeah, yeah, favor reds and pinks because, uh, is it, is, what is Amethyst in? Is it Sugalite? The Amethyst and Garnet is Sugalite, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they're very purple. Yes. Yeah. So... To differentiate her from Sugalite, I would, uh, I would yeah. favor more of the pinks For sure. and the yeah. reds. That's me. Yep, I agree. Some... Yes, chat, tell us what you guys have been doing today. Yeah. Um, talk to us. We've been talking at you for the last yeah. few streams. <laughs> like, how long should I hold off before I inevitably steer things towards Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Metrico said one of those lay on the couch with cats and do literally nothing else days, which was... That sounds incredible. Pretty good. Yeah, once I got back from the gym, I uh, did a lot of that, and I'm knitting a lap blanket and uh, watched some watched a lot of Scrubs. It's weird. <laughs> I can put on Scrubs, and I just it it'll be it'll prompt me for another episode, and I'll be like, sure, and then like five hours yeah. will disappear, and I'm like, huh. It is a perfectly acceptable amount of noise and motion. <laughs> and Dr. Cox is awesome. <laughs> Yes, he's yes. the best thing about Absolutely. that that entire show. 110%. Like ten percent, it is it is at its very best when it is the Doctor Cox show. Um. Ooh, awkward family reunion. So. I'm about to have one of those yeah. in August. <laughs> uh, Jared just had one of those in Saskatchewan during the fires. Ooh, yeah. I guess I can't really like crap on uh, family reunions too much because that's where I met Steve. Oh, okay, that's fair. Steve, who one of these days will be on a stream, but unfortunately he has a family and responsibilities. Yay. He's like an adult. He's an adult. He's doing adult he's things. He's also three hours ahead of us in Toronto, so... Oh. Uh, one day. One day. Yeah. One magical day. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I met Steve at a family reunion when I was 21. Cool. I had no idea that I had... Uh, three half-brothers. Well, I, I knew I had one, but I didn't know I had three. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Magical, happy, fun times. Yeah. Uh, I do have a list of topics. So what do you think? Fuchsia hair? I like it. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm about to go visit my extended family in uh, August, the third week of August. So uh-huh. it's like, just I'll I'll be back in time for. I'm not missing any of my radio shows or any of these streams unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> uh, right up until I leave. Nice. But it's gonna be interesting because my family is a little crazy. So yes. For those viewers who don't know, Mia is leaving us soon-ish um, to go and be a super awesome librarian, basically. Um, yeah, give or take. You're going to ar- archive game? Uh, I'd like to go into digital archiving. Yeah, so, that's, a, yeah. that's the thing. That's Words. the thing. We'll see what happens, you know, when first semester in all of my required classes. Gonna read Balthazar's dating story. Marry that girl. Balthazar, wise man. Marry uh, that girl. I'm going to Vancouver. Oh, yeah, I'm moving to Vancouver. Yeah. I'm following in the footsteps of uh, Matt and Jaren Talley and all the other trainers who are leaving us. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, darker skin tone or lighter skin tone? Hmm. Somewhere in the middle, maybe? She's got four arms. You could, uh... I could, you well, could I could make the different colors. What about up. face? Mm-hmm. I'd say a little... Hmm. I might go more bluish in the face to contrast against the pink. Yeah. You know, get more of the, the sapphire in there. Yeah, could do, could do. You could do, like, really pale. Yeah. And I'll make uh, the arms... These two arms darker. You guys can't see where I'm pointing, but it's the bottom two arms. Trust us, it's a thing. <laughs> yes, trust us, it's actually a place where she can point. Um, yeah, so no, I'm uh, organizing moving stuff, which is going to be really fun, because uh, movers eh, will be like a thousand dollars. So we're probably going the DIY route. Yeah, That's so I suggest that. Yeah. Uh, so, because buying pizza and beer to have for people to come help is going to be a great deal, I think, easier. And uh, I don't actually have that much stuff. I Like, I panic every once in a while, because uh, the last time I moved, I was all alone, because my parents, uh, my sister didn't live here yet, and my parents were um, out of town. Uh-huh. And uh, I... And I moved on a week. I had I had gotten a job literally the week before, so I moved on a Tuesday, and was at work at eight o'clock on the next day on the Wednesday, mm-hmm. which was just I w- it was exhausting, um, and it was very very exhausting and very very stressful. And this time I have people who will be like, "Here's going to be the plan. We are going to organize things, and I have more time." So fantastic. Yeah, I'll do that. So, because you guys weren't watching my computer five minutes ago, I just brought to light to Jeff yes. that there's a new Five Nights at Freddy's. There sure is. Yeah, had no idea. I uh, I thought I thought the Freddy's thing had uh, had been wrapped up. I was wrong. We you all thought so that. Wrong. We're, 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 we're back into it. And the thing that's always gotten me about the at least the the, the, the past two Five Nights is that. <laughs> um, he announces them, and then because he codes them so quick, like, he just drops them way earlier, than, and I'll be like, oh, that's out already? Like, yeah. yeah like, so I just this, assumed it wasn't going to be... the day that I hear about Five Nights at Freddy's games, it drops, are, yeah. they're already done out, yeah. and someone's made a video of it, so yeah. I actually have to play it. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I assumed it was coming out sometime next year, like, how they pace out all these things, and yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, in closing, or not in closing, but in all, it looks horrifying. It sure does. Especially because you play as a little <laughs> kid. Yes. And they've do. added this new feature in it where you actually have to, like, run to each side of the room. I still don't know if something can get you as you're running. That, that might be my yeah. strategy if I ever play it, just to keep running. Yeah. Um, but they also added in the mechanic of waiting at the door in the pitch black to see if you can hear breathing. Yeah. And then if you do, you close the door. <laughs> and if you close the door too early, like, 
What is it? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen enough. I'm so scared to even yeah. watch things on it. I know. I was, yeah. Like I was watching like the video. I'm like, well, we just, let's close the door. Like I mean, we're not at the offices. It doesn't take power. Yeah. To close um, this door. Maybe you have to hold it closed. I don't know. I think that's what it is. Actually, you have to hold I'm the doors closed. They hold it closed. Too uh, long it, it's stuff. just a bedroom door. Like, yeah, they're theory. just so a it, bedroom doors. Th- this is taking place in a child's room, and you're yeah. the child. Uh, and you have two doors to the hallways and a closet door. Yeah, <laughs> that you have to run to, and I don't know the full mechanics either. But the thing that is brilliant is that like that's a thing that all of us because the third one got so convoluted that no one could understand what the hell was going on like well except the game theorist yeah no 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 but in terms of the actual gameplay (laughs) of like oh sometimes there's the vents and sometimes poisonous gas and Um. sometimes you know this one thing like a sailor scout now that's unfortunate (laughs) um and uh so that one really got like very convoluted, I think. But this one capitalizes on such a common and such a uh, universal fear of like when I'm alone in my like back when my parents still lived in Calgary, um, they everybody would go to bed before I did, and like you walk even as an adult, mm-hmm. you walk around in a huge, really, really dark house, and you can't see every little corner and. It's freaky. Like, yeah. someone could absolutely be there. It still happens to me just in my apartment. And my apartment's not that big. but And I don't even believe in any kind of paranormal phenomenon yeah. at all. You know, like, I'm I'm very much not yeah. a believer in, in ghosts or the supernatural yeah. or anything like that. But still, regardless, you know, when it's dark, I'm like, well, I could just get up and go to the bathroom. Yeah. But instead, what I'm going to do is turn on the lights yeah. and get up and go to the bathroom because I'm not walking in the dark because God only knows what's out there. Yeah, like... Because that's how they get you. That's mm-hmm. how they get you. But yeah, like, I'd go... I've um, seen the horror movies. I'm not stupid. Lights yeah. on. Yeah. When I lived... Uh, the first house I lived in when I moved here was a, a conventional house that five people lived in. But for long stretches of time in the summers, I would be the only renter and the only person no. there. And it yeah it would just be like yeah there was any place where someone mm. could have snuck in and would be hiding and it would just yeah so and, it capitalizes on a really universal fear and i and think course, that's really neat now we've all seen those horrifying stories online where someone finds out that like a homeless person or whatnot has been living in their home hiding somewhere yeah for, for like weeks or for, months yeah or something. you know it's like and they leave yeah. like they start to get suspicious. They leave a camera out, and they'll see someone crawl out of a cupboard. Yeah. Or, or crawl back in, or find that they, no, there's... No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that, that poor cat. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, when... The first season of Supernatural, the show, uh, kind of... Hello, Governor Explosion. Hello. Hello. Um... What explosion do you govern? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how it is, Metacritic. Uh, um, so in the first season of Supernatural, they kind of traded not only in the like the stereotypical ghosts and possessed people and demons and stuff, but also they sort of took on common um, urban legends mm-hmm. and would sort of have them made real so they were you know so they they took on like bloody mary was one Mm -hmm. of them and then there was one that genuinely freaked me out where they took on the hook man Mm. myth of like you know the two kids making out on the you know in the secluded area and the hook being embedded but they combined it with the aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light one yeah. where the girl goes in and doesn't want to disturb her roommate. Her roommate, so she lies down and she like feels the dog licking her her hand uh, or something, and then she goes to bed. And when she wakes up, the roommate's dead, the dog is dead, and it's just written like, "Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light?" And it just freaked me out. I'd forgotten how terrifying that particular one was. I didn't know that one. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's visceral on a couple of levels. Uh, yeah. Thanks. You are welcome. Live alone. Uh, yeah. 
Like, this is why I don't watch horror movies. Like, my, my general rule is I don't watch horror movies unless I'm not sleeping alone. Mm. And I'm usually sleeping alone, so I never watch horror movies. I watch certain... There are certain horror movies. Like, there's one called Martyrs that's a French horror movie that I, I still loved. need to see. Oh, my God. Okay, so next weekend, maybe I'll bring it over? Yes. Okay, because I have it on, on DVD. Um, yes. And... Uh, but Martyrs isn't so much... I mean, it's scary, but it's not... It has very few jump scares. It's more of a, like, take your soul and wring it out over the sink. Like, mm-hmm. it's, <laughs> like yeah. it's a washcloth. <laughs> like, yes, thank you, Metricos. And, and actually, Cam of Loading Ready Run, Cam and I, uh, he told me about it. And then I saw the uh, last six minutes or so of it on a terrible... Um, dubbed YouTube video and I was like okay I need to see this for real now so we sat there but even seeing the last six minutes I like had to go down go and lie down for about 20 minutes oh, no. because <laughs> it's yeah it's horrifying rather than terrifying like it's it's the story of um, these uh, two girls uh, one of their friend they make friends because they're in a an orphanage together and one of them has been rescued from this uh warehouse where they broke in and they found that she'd been tortured for an indiscriminate, you know, undetermined amount of time. And so they put her into this, you know, orphanage and she makes friends with this other girl who's there for relatively normal normal reasons, I guess. Non, uh, you know, non-torture, non, related. non-torture related reasons and uh, so when they're grown up the, they're gonna be there for a reason it might as well yeah. be non-torture related yeah. uh, so when they've grown up the and so then it catches up to them when they're adults and the girl who was tortured uh, calls the other one and says hey I found the family who did this to me and um, so the first bit of the movie covers the two of them going to this house and one hell bent on revenge and the other one pretty sure that her friend's just having a complete nervous breakdown and then it gets, and then it gets fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and then it, and then it gets really, really, really fucked up. And um, but and I actually wrote about this for our local university newspaper. That what struck me, um, because on the surface, and when you describe it to somebody, and when you see it, Martyrs looks a lot like torture porn. And the American remake is going to be awful, exploitative torture porn. But. The thing about Martyrs, and it ties into the theme of the whole film, which I'm not going to spoil, but um, the feeling I really got was that this the writer-director was like, hey, people go see horror movies for a reason. We are voyeuristic. We want to experience things. Th- these, we want to skip to the edge of the void and then skip back. We want to stare into it from a place of safety. That's why we go to horror movies. It gives us a chance to see these things um, from a safe place and watch other people experience them. And we, by proxy, feel the rush of surviving it and experiencing it. Um, And so throughout this whole, this very, in many places, very, very gory, really disturbing film, like, I came out of it really feeling kind of almost pure, like... There was this cleanly, you know, it was almost a clean burn of, like, I felt that the, unlike other horror, like, modern horror films, especially coming out of the States, I felt that the the director really actually respected his audience. He wasn't saying, okay, do you, you know, you, you sick fucks want to see some eyeballs, okay, we're gonna show you some eyeballs. Like, eyeballs? it was like, you, no, there's, there, there isn't really, okay. well... Okay, uh, pause right there. Yes. Uh, chat, I would like your input on the color <laughs> scheme, how far we've come, suggestions, yes. slash changes, and you guys as well. Mm. Um, I like it. Um, as do I. Um, I feel like the yellow is... I needed a different color because yeah. it was like too pink. Yeah, it's too pink. But the, I agree that the yellow could be changed to something else. Yeah. Um, um, I, I would say uh, this has nothing to do with the yellow. But uh, because uh, Rose's outfit is so very pale pink, like you've got on the gloves there, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, on the highlights on the boots, I would I would expect to see a little more of that because yeah. that is the majority of her color scheme is yeah. that very pale pink. Okay. So like and, like you, you uh, did it to her I skirt swap, for a bit there. How about and, I swap the dark colors for the light colors? Yeah. yeah. 
And then uh, some Ruck Doc says needs a bit more blue. Like maybe in place of yellow could be. See, I was trying to stay more on yeah. the red or pink one because yeah. uh, even yeah. though I realize that sapphire is in there, yeah. um, both like garnet is basically a version of purple. She's like maroon, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, rose is pink. So yeah. I figured that like the maroony, purpley pink. Yeah. Well, the red side was better, but yeah. uh, I think you could probably but get maybe away like a, with but that being like said, a, a pale blue. Ones. Yeah, like maybe. the pale blue on the glasses would be good. Yeah, yeah. maybe a pale like a robin's egg, like egg on a uh, yeah. What's his uh, sardonyx? Like, where did the orange come from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oops. You, you, you've got you've got some wiggle room on what you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's better than the, than yeah. the yellow. I think so. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, I'm also going to swap the other two. Yeah. All right. Okay. Carry on. Um, yeah, but th that was uh, what I felt was, like, the uh, the thing about Martyrs is it's not an easy watch, and I, even though I immediately rushed out and bought the DVD, I haven't watched it again <laughs> yet, because um, it's intense, but it really felt like this guy, um, and I think that's very common for what they're calling the new French extremity. Uh, movement in in French horror is like they understand it's the same thing with Inside Out. It's like this this negative emotion that you seek is not evidence of negativity mm -hmm. or something broken in yourself. Yeah, um, it's actually healthy. So yeah, I can't say enough good things about mart martyrs, but oh boy. Speaking of Inside Out, to mm. move us away from horror for a moment, mm -hmm. uh, because we're gonna go right back. At oh some yeah, point, absolutely. But but you, yeah. You, you were talking about uh, ins Inside Out last week, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, in terms of mental health. And uh, today, I was reading um, a post from uh, somebody who who works in mental health that they're already using the uh, using Inside Out with children, yeah. and because they're toys, they can do it with nonverbal yeah. kids as well. They can. Yeah. You know, to help them express their emotions and whatnot, and yeah, um, and just stuff like how the the mom, uh, like the the driver and the mom, is sadness, yeah, uh, which might indicate that she has depression. Possibly yeah, don't know. Yeah. Whereas the father, the driver, and the father is anger. Yeah, uh, and again, you know, anger issues. Maybe who knows? But it it's you know illustrating that despite you know what would uh, generally be considered negative emotions, those two people seemed perfectly well adjusted yeah. in in the context of the film, you know, they're it so Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um I just thought that was interesting and it, yeah, that it is... reminded me of what we were talking about last week. So yeah. I'd bring it up. Um yeah, so no, I uh I watched my first going back to Five Nights at Freddy's, my first experience was watching Ash and Alex play it, uh, <laughs> and just... I, I didn't even play it. I was just yeah. there while he played it, and it was too stressful. Like, was I the one that introduced you to Five yes, Nights? Yes, you were. Uh, uh, Jeff introduced me to Five Nights at Freddy's while we were at PAX last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and I think it was actually Markiplier's reaction video that we. That we I watched, yeah, that's is, and that's what I proceeded also how to I go and watch. Markiplier. That's what I proceeded to go and watch. Was was that? But um, then we also found a video where of just someone playing through without any audio because I guess they're. It was actually a mistake. Which yeah, was brilliant, yeah. Their their oh, that's their, so their mic was you know just not working. So like oh the person's God. talking, but you can't hear them. But the audio from the game is still there. And uh, do they have a, a, a camera? Like, do, do they no, have? No, you can't no. see them. So it's, it was it's just, just the, the game. gameplay. And oh, every so wow. often, if you listened really close, like you'd have to turn it way up to hear the person talking about what they're wow. doing. Okay, don't let me forget that she actually needs another shield in front of that hand at okay. some point. Okay. Ash. No, not now. Nice try. Oh my god. Yes. What? Uh, Hot Pepper Gaming's Dante Bosco episode is up, so oh, okay. that's what we're gonna watch during the break. <laughs> have you ever seen Hot Pepper Gaming, Ash? I have not. It's insane. It's the dumbest thing ever, but yet so, so it's, fascinating. It's really great to watch. <laughs> it's an entire YouTube channel in which they give, they sit people down, and they have had, like, really, really famous uh, video game voice actors. They've done people like Mark Plyer, who, uh, you know, YouTube celebrities, Aaron their friends. Game Grumps. Yeah, yeah, Game Grumps. And, um, and, uh, they, 
they sit him down and they say, "Okay, you're going to review this game, and but first you have to eat this habanero pepper." Oh God! Yeah. So they eat the pepper, or sometimes like more. They've had uh, they had Andrew W K on to eat a like he ate like a ghost pepper. Oh God! Like one of the of really, 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 really bad ones. Um, because of course he did. Yeah, of course he did. <laughs> and uh, so they eat the pepper, they have to review the game, and only after they finish reviewing the game do they get, like, milk no. or bread or yeah. stuff to, <laughs> <laughs> to help them. So you watch them slowly yeah. have these, like, per- just, they, you, you watch a breakdown happen <laughs> bit it's by bit great. by bit. It's I've the compilation... The compilation videos are the ones to go for. It's just, they just edit out, you know, they edit together all the best parts of the people just in enormous amounts of pain. But I saw on Twitter they were doing a Dante Bosco one, and I've been waiting for it. So, yeah. It's weirdly fascinating. Yeah. It is a weirdly fascinating thing. You can do a bus You can do a bus here? He's trying to jump up on the bed. Yeah, bus isn't... Well, he's not trying to jump up on the bed. He's so waiting for the he's, magical hand that pushes him up. He's waiting for Ash to stop drawing so she can pull him up onto the bed. Because my dog is pathetic. Good work, Buster. <laughs> and then he gets up there and he's like, I did it all by myself. <laughs> See, we I'm keep telling Graham that Strudel's reviews would be great, but he doesn't listen to us. Strudel's? Explain yourself. I'm not sure what you mean, Night Balian. Um, if he means eating Strudel's while... Uh, while reviewing games, I would, I, I will happily take that idea, and just you know, review anything while I yeah. get to, while I get to eat delicious strudel. Strudel is awesome. Yeah, the market on Yates is really good strudel. Basically, any st- like strudel is sugar. It's hard to go wrong with it's strudel. It's butter yeah. and sugar and like all those fruit. delicious things that are bad for fruit you. things it's it's yeah that's the thing yeah. it's like i had a strudel from the market on the eights so i was like why is this so good it's like oh right again. i don't eat like i don't eat baked goods very like like that very often and it's just a lot of butter and sugar uh, see, i've got a twitch channel that does nothing that could just do that me neither yeah me I too just do that and i still keep getting people because i used to stream on sunday nights and i streamed like Sunday nights from 9 to midnight, which was a terrible, terrible time <laughs> slot because I was always exhausted by the end. But, um, yeah, every so often I get more followers, so I should do something with it. I get Once I'm on vacation, I could probably do something. Strudel. I really want strudel, man. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Can, can, Whenever you talk about hey, food, I'm like... Bartender? Do you, do you guys want to, like, pause the... Uh... The stream. Pause the stream for a minute and we'll run down to the market on Yates <laughs> yeah. and get Strudel. You guys will wait, right? Yeah. Anybody who's you watching cool in Victoria. With that? Yeah, if y'all you if y'all want to bring a Strudel. It um... is Manga Studio Metricos. Or pardon me, uh Nasty Nar. Mm-hmm. Nasty Nar. Yeah. The nastiest of Nars. So, um going from Five Nights at Freddy's, mm-hmm. we can uh talk about Times where you were scared shitless mm-hmm. slash uh, scary games that you played. Uh, this mm-hmm. is one time I was watching this video about five nights. Ago. <laughs> yeah. it just freaked me the it hell out. It was about five minutes before the stream yeah. went online. <laughs> um, well, I've actually got a good one uh, ish. I don't know how. Uh... Oh, come on, Q Monster. This is what we bred you for. Hmm, I said, no, honey, I won't. Bread! Ah! <laughs> Um no uh Q threw out his back, so he Aww. uh needs to stay and uh, he should anyway. Um <laughs> so I, like many people, went through a brief Beatles phase. Um, brief. I'm still in that Beatles phase. You see, it kind of got th- it kind of got beaten out of me because my sister took the phase and turned it into a full blown obsession. So by the time I left the house to move here, I was kind of sick of them for a little bit, which was a shame because I actually went back and started listened to a few things uh, while I was prepping my radio show a few weeks ago, and I was like, "Damn, son! Like, you know, I was, got to get you in my life is still a really great song." But all of them are still really great. Songs. Yeah, all of them are really, really still great, like great songs. But uh, so I had for a while on the on on my bedroom wall beside sort of I, my bed was in the middle, um, and then on the wall beside me 
was the um, Hard Day's Night poster and the Let It Be poster. So it was two posters, both with, you know, the four faces. I had faces. a revolver poster. Nice. Um, with the four faces. So it was a nice symmetry to them. I feel like people who were born in the 90s are not going to be able to do the math on this and assume that we were, like, around when the Beatles were around. <laughs> oh, yeah. For the record... <laughs> Um, we, John Lennon died many years before we were born. <laughs> yeah, before we were even sparks. Well, actually, was he? You were born in eighty one. Seventy nine. Oh, okay. Math. Yeah. When? When did so he So for one full year, you yeah. and John Lennon overlap. Yeah. 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 Um, Me and John. But yeah, you all were like besties. <laughs> yeah, besties. Um, we hung out. No big so, deal. Yeah. Talk, so I had that, and I think I had a, a Sergeant Pepper thing somewhere else in my uh, room. But anyway. Um, And then one night, I stayed up late on the... And this was, again, in the large house where I grew up and where I, as a teenager, tended to go to bed later than my parents and my younger siblings. I hope you were haunted by a beetle. I kind of. I stayed up late reading about the Paul is Dead hoax on Uh, the internet. And was... And the other thing I should say is that I'm really... uh, I'm not as bad now, but for the longest time, I was stark terrified of fire to the point where I refused to light a match. I refused to hold, like, be around matches when they were lit. It, It's better now, but it was really, really bad for a while. So reading that he, like, was decapitated and, you know, died in a fiery car crash explosion kind of stuck with me because I was reading it into, like, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And while the hoax part of it is really neat... The car crash part of it's pretty horrifying. And then so I went up to bed, and again, kind of tying into that alone in a very, very dark house thing. And I had some kind of a nightmare. I had a nightmare, and I woke up, and or I, I opened my eyes, and I looked over at the two posters, and Paul's face was melting. Oh, no. <laughs> um, at least that's how I saw it. And, uh, and Eternal I... Eternal darkness, Mia's house. I took the posters down the next day. Because <laughs> it was, like, it... Yeah, it was... Because I was, I was frozen in bed. Like, I looked, and then I pulled the covers up, like, back up over my head. I turned the light on, like, my lamp on. Mm-hmm. And I pulled the covers over my head, and I slept with the lights fully on <laughs> like that. Because I was so afraid I couldn't even get out of bed. So, yeah, that was uh, a time I was really, really scared. <laughs> I've also got another, yeah, I'm gonna, but, anybody uh, else? Kinda, I guess, I don't know, like, the the strange thing is, while I'm a huge chicken when it comes to horror movies, mm-hmm. they don't actually scare me very much, like, seeing a horror movie rarely gives me nightmares, uh, while I'll be scared watching it, you know, afterwards, I almost always forget everything, mm-hmm. like, instantly, um... If I were to reach way, way back, I do remember uh, back in around 99, 2000, around about there, when I fir- when I was first living in Vancouver, uh, my girlfriend and I went to see the Blair Witch Project before mm. everyone knew what the Blair Witch Project was, like, right. like the first week that it was out. Right. And I remember being pretty freaked out by that during, you know, especially the ending. I was just like, oh, no. (laughs) What was he doing in the corner? God. Yeah. Uh, I found that very troubling. And then, of course, by the time we got out of the movie theater, it was, like, pitch black. Yeah, of course. And we had to go walk to the car and whatnot. So we went back to to the, the bedroom that I was renting at the time because it didn't have a full place. I just rented a bedroom in some some family's basement uh and mandy uh i guess yeah uh, my 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 girlfriend at the time refused to go to sleep with the lights off mm. i can't sleep with lights on like yeah like i i need the dark yeah so uh that that was an awful night because like she kept uh you know starting up during the night just like oh. i'm like Everything's fine. Go yeah. back to sleep. Go back to sleep. I mean, like, tried to sleep. Didn't happen. It was awful. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess that's a that's the closest I've got to a to a scary story. Everyone told me that I was going to be really freaked out by the ring. Uh, I have a 
ring story. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that didn't happen. Although I have a great ring story about my dad. Okay. Which is weird. Uh, my dad's never seen the ring. But uh, last Halloween, uh, he opened the door to a trick-or-treater uh, and opened the door to see someone dressed up as the girl from the ring right. except like she had uh, splayed herself out and like thrown her hair forward on the on the ground <laughs> and, and did the whole the whole Walk. thing yeah. you know he's like it was the scariest thing I ever saw it was great yeah. <laughs> I was like yeah gave her all like, the candy yeah, I, gave, I gave her so much candy and I'm here like, you yeah, go yeah she was doing things from the ring he's like oh it's from a movie yeah he thought he thought that this girl was just very creative <laughs> yeah. fantastic yeah. Like, wow um, um, I don't know about you guys, but when my uh, adrenaline is up, I tend to be more susceptible to being scared. I can sometimes put myself in the mindset to get scared. Yeah. Like, if I get really hyped about a movie and I'm really excited, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be scared. And then yeah. the more you think you're going to be scared, the more scared it is, which is very much like the more you say to yourself, nothing can hurt me. You know, the only thing you yeah. fear is fear itself, the less scared you will be. Yeah. Um, but I went... This is going to date me. I went on a date with someone I met on ICQ. Oh, man. Uh, I still know my ICQ number. I don't. I do not. Expect many people to be like, hey, Jeff, do you still use this? <laughs> I yeah. do not. <laughs> I do not. But uh, that is my old ICQ number. It's no, fairly, I was on fairly ICQ. short for an ICQ number, too. I was on ICQ for like a half a second before it it's moved to worst. MSN Messenger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, I went on a date with someone that I met over ICQ, and... Uh, in our minds, we're just like, you know, what's so scary about The Ring? I don't know about most of you, but a lot of the horror that I had seen before The Ring wasn't actual, like, we want to terrify you. It was like, lol, we're slashing things. Yeah, it was monsters. slasher movies. Yeah. So, in my head, that's kind of like what a horror movie was. It was kind of ridiculous in, like, an entertaining way. Yeah. Uh, so I hadn't really seen something that was actually trying to scare you. And uh, we went into it kind of blind, and we are just like, this movie looks funny. And we had just met. Right. <laughs> and not ten minutes into it, when that first closet door opens and you see the girl's face all twisted up, we just looked at each other, like, frozen, and we're, like, grabbing onto yeah. each other for dear life for the whole movie. I'm like, this, that's one way to bond with someone. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so awkward after that, like, we barely hung out after the fact, because we were yeah. both such wussies in the movie theater. Uh, Since yeah. then, I've become completely desensitized to horror, because I got very addicted to the feeling of getting scared in a movie theater, or yeah. watching a movie. Yeah. So I watched all the horror I could get my hands on, just to yeah. get that feeling back, but it was never the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more horror that is good you know there's a lot of stuff that i really have very little interest in seeing like i have no interest in seeing any of the saw films although i weirdly have like gone through obsessive periods where i've researched every like i've read through everything that happens i've read through all the traps yeah so like i i it's i really enjoy but that's the other thing is that i read a lot of horror i read a lot of horror books and some of my favorite books are really unsettling or fucked up or you know like my mom refuses to take um book re- recommendations from me because <laughs> she's like it's gonna be weird isn't it i was like yeah i taught myself to read when i was like three like the standard fiction plot is no longer interesting to me if it doesn't have people's brains melting out of their ears i don't really care but uh yes and i will recommend some some horror uh in a bit if we remember that uh, reminds me of like the thing that scared the, the Jesus. The, yeah, the, the, the GBs out of me as idea. a child mm-hmm. uh, was uh, was Pennywise from oh, Stephen yeah. King's It. Uh, specifically, uh, not not the book, the uh, the the Tim pen- Curry. Yeah, Tim Curry as yeah. Pennywise. Yeah. Uh, and when I discovered that he was Tim Curry, in my first uh, my my first. Uh, experience of tim curry was clue so <laughs> so for me tim curry is forever wandsworth sure yeah you yeah, know sure. and you know who is essentially a good guy until the uh, until this the ending where he's a bad guy right yeah so you know it was hard for me to accept tim curry as a <laughs> bad guy yeah you know except that oh god i do not accept this yeah, Pen- yeah. pennywise you know Freak, freaked me the hell out until I watched the Nostalgia Critics review. Yeah, I was just and, about to mention. And then I was just like, 
I'm not. This isn't yeah. scary to me anymore because now it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's all, very. That's <laughs> basically all I know of it is the Nostalgia Critic's really yeah. good review of it, where he's just like, there's one moment where he's in the library. Uh, yeah. The Pennywise is, and he's like, "Do you want Prince Albert in a can? Well, you better let him out!" Aha! Aha! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like, this is nuts. Like this is this oh, is man. dumb. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, Lisa Beaks for you. Tim Curry as uh, as Darkness in Legend was uh, like pro- was technically my first experience with Tim Curry, but I didn't know it was Tim Curry right. because you know under all of that makeup, the really the most uh, the the most uh, noticeable thing about him that says, oh yeah, that's Tim Curry is this, is it's his lips. Yeah, you know, but I didn't know Tim Curry lips at the time. Fern Gully. <laughs> Fern. Yeah, yeah. Gully. Fern motherfucking gully. Fern oh, motherfucking man. gully. That man. was certainly a movie that existed I and we watched it. I still remember <laughs> most, if happened. not all, of the lyrics to uh, Batty's rap. I, you know what? I, I, if you hadn't just said that, I wouldn't have known it was a fucking song. Like, yeah. My name is Betty. The logic is erratic. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember... Uh, I do remember Ferngully. That was one, yeah, like that freaked me out as a kid. Towards the end, where he starts burning everything up again, afraid mm-hmm. of fire. Um, hey, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Aww. Um, and there was, and I've told this story before, but when my parents, we we were at a cabin in Quebec, where which we my family uh, tended to do when I was a kid, we'd go out so we could visit extended family and also, you know, swim in the lake and everything. But there was a tiny little video rental store slash, you know, general store (laughs) that we'd go to because this was back like before even DVDs. So Mm -hmm. it was VHS all the way. And uh, so my parents rented Mars Attacks. Oh, Mars Attacks. And we um, watched Mars Attacks, and so we were fine up until the first point where the Martians come out, and then oh, when yeah. they, <laughs> the first time when they fry a guy yeah. to a crisp, yeah, he turns to into just like a, a crispy skeleton. Yeah, a, a neon green skeleton. It's and so my great. sister and I bolted. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we... Bolted. It oh, was wow. like it was like when you make a loud noise around a deer. Like oh, it was just gone. That's and we, amazing. We flew it down the stairs to the bedroom we shared, oh. and we're holding each other. And my sister and I did not get along when we were children, but we were holding each other and sobbing. I can't and even. So scared. I can't even imagine someone we being so, scared of Mars attacks. We were that's, so that's scared. Amazing. We were so not even mad. We no, were no. inconsolable and so hysterical that it, we refused to calm down until my dad came into the room and he was like, it's okay guys they didn't kill them, they just sent them to Mars, like yeah. they didn't, you know, like the, yeah. the, the, the ray gun didn't, you know, it just it was just a yeah. transport thing, and uh-huh. we were like, oh okay and we calmed down <laughs> and like in <laughs> retrospect, it's so not true, because no, the guy's course. skeleton yeah, is there, but it's just, dad's gotta do something Sarah, I noticed that you look like my fusion, yeah yeah, I played oh my god I played Stronger Than You on my radio yeah, show you yesterday. Did. So good. I did, yep. And I put it on, it was just like, my friends, like, I, and I said, I host an art, you know, I co-host an art stream on, on Sundays, and uh, we, uh, you know, we've become slightly obsessed with Steven Universe. This is the basic rundown. Only slightly. <laughs> Only slightly. Here's a song. And then I proceeded to play a song from Supernatural as well. Nice. Um, but, yeah, so. I spell shield. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Um, Carry on. So there was that. Uh... Mars Attacks. Like... Yeah, Mars Attacks. <laughs> it's weird. Like, I saw Mars Attacks uh, in... I'm pretty sure I was in high school when Mars Attacks came out. Yeah. Uh, it was either in high school or towards the end of high school, just after high school. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the first time I saw it, I thought it was brilliant. I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. And then I liked it so much, I went back to see yeah. it again, like, yeah. within a couple of days. And the second time I watched it, I was just like, what did I like about this yeah. movie? This is awful. Like, this is <laughs> No, bad. no, we're not starting with that. All uh, is fine. <laughs> Shut up. Someone's, someone's <laughs> doing stuff outside. It's um, not okay. Uh, now, I, I've 
I've I've grown to appreciate Mars Attacks as yeah, kind of like for this, what it is. this weird kind of thing. It's but uh, God, it's I, I, I still there's a part of me that wishes I could have held on to that really pure love I had for Mars Attacks. Like Yeah. Because I thought it was like I seriously thought it was genius yeah. the first time I saw it. And then I saw it again and I was just like, I was very wrong. Yeah, I've had that happen. Um I've had that happen before. Like, you just see it in, under the right circumstances with the yeah. right people at the right time of day and the yeah. right frame of mind, and all of a sudden, you know, you're just like, yeah. hell yeah, yeah. Um, I hate it when when you see a movie like that, and then it then later it's gone. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, I uh, gone forever. Yeah, I, I I ended up like that a lot of times with uh, schmaltzy movies as soon as I started doing film studies. Yeah. I remember going to see, Aug I think it's called August Rush. It's a movie about a, like a, a, a music prodigy kid and it has like Robin Williams in it as basically playing like a weird Fagin character and it's all very schmaltzy and like... He finds his Robin dad, and he finds his mom. And, sure? Yeah, he finds his <laughs> sure. dad, and he finds his mom, and they ended up playing like, and his mom's played by Carrie Russell. Now I remember, and um, she's a cellist, and they end up like meeting at the uh, concert that like this little eleven-year-old kid conducts and everything. And so I saw it with my mom and my sister, and my mom and my sister toward the end were sobbing. They were just like. They bought into the, yeah. they, you know, the, the strings and the score yeah. swelled and every, you know, uh -huh. and I looked over and they were just sobbing and I was just like, but, but no, I see what you're doing, movie. I don't yeah. buy it. Like, no, I, I hate you have to be like Toy that. Story 3 level, like, good to wreck my shit. Yeah, Hollywood's, like, they, they do that a lot with the, uh, like, manipulative movies. Like, mm -hmm. not... Because there's a difference between being, you know, like, for real, moving and emotional and touching, and being, and just playing for the heartstrings. Like, yeah. this is going to make them feel this. Yeah. This is going to make, you know, like, like movies like uh, I Am Sam. Yeah. Or, uh, I think, John uh, Doe, uh, that that uh, Denzel Washington movie where he yeah. takes over a hospital because he wants to... John Q. His, okay, John you Q. know what? I love that movie. I'm sorry. All right. All I'm right. sorry. I've got a, and now I've got a... A really schmaltzy score stuck in my head, and I'm, I'm trying to replace the movie. Oh yeah, Dragonheart. Oh Dragonheart. <laughs> oh. Dragonheart. Dragonheart. I still love Dragonheart. I, I mean, watched. I don't care how bad it I is. I watched Dragonheart at uh, in school at one point. I think because like I was in a, a weird. I bet you nerdy... like Lady Hawk too. Mm. Oh, Lady Hawk's score I'd is never amazing. Seen, I've never seen. Oh, I've never seen Lady Hawk. Lady but... Hawk is scored by the Alan Parsons Project. What? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Oh my god, it's all synth and shit. And That's and it's so great. and it stars Matthew Broderick doing the worst English accent you've ever heard in your life. Because like this is young Broderick I don't too. I don't know. Have you seen Keanu Reeves in the Dracula? In worse, Dracula? Um, worse than that? I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. That, that, that is, that a, is tough a tough one. one. <laughs> but it, it is it's certainly unbelievable. It's it's Matthew Broderick, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. As a woman who turns into a hawk, hence okay. Lady Hawk. Oh my god. And Rutger Hauer as her beau who turns into a wolf. And you see, they change oh. at different times. So she is a lady all night, but then during the day she's a hawk. Right. But he is a wolf, like, all all night and turns right. into a dude during the day. <laughs> so they can never be together. <laughs> oh my god. And Rumpel is in it too from Rumpel. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, what else What's is he in? Um, Rumpel is a uh, is a British series about a. Uh, oh, I thought you meant Rumpel from Once Upon a Time. Like uh, uh, what the fuck? I've never seen Once Upon a Time, Me so either. I don't know. Uh, Rumpel is a uh, uh, a British series about a uh, a lawyer. Uh, he's hmm. great, uh, but he's he was also in uh, the original uh, The Prisoner with oh, uh, McGowan. Okay, yeah. He was uh, one of the higher ups in yeah, the village. Yeah. Uh, he's also in. Um, in one of the Beatles movies, he's uh, the bad guy trying to get the ring back from uh, from Ringo, Ringo nice. Starr. <laughs> awesome. Was oh, it I Ringo? see what they did there. I see what they did there. Um, anyway, he's in it, and uh, someone yeah. else is in it. Possibly F. Marie Abraham. I don't know. Can't I remember. I about my abil inability to uh, draw circles. Ruby and, uh, Ruby and Sapphire reuniting in Jailbreak is a reference to Castle in the Sky. Reference to Castle in the Sky... 
Oh. It's been too long. Oh my god, Castle in the Sky is my favorite Miyazaki film, for the record. I understand that it has its problems, and it's, it's not as seen. technically... Like, I understand, like, I've, I've seen only a few... I haven't seen all of them. I've seen a bunch of them. I understand, you know, where certain things are better in other... Like, like Spirited Away has probably has the tighter screenplay and it's mm-hmm. really really impactful and you know uh all these different you know, things um but castle in the sky has the robots that are so beautiful and um because it's the floating castle in the sky and it's this abandoned um like futuristic city mm-hmm. that dis- it's sort of like the sky bound atlantis yeah um and so when they land on it they found that they find that there are these uh, really, really tall robots that, and they have moss growing on them, and like they've been living in harmony with the animals that mm. have taken over this ruined city, and so that and the scene where they're underground and the um, and there's these, I think it's like worms or something that light up. They're in this underground cavern, and uh, they're they're the wacky uh, minor character that they're with is like you know, blow out the lantern, you know, and then look, and, like, the stars, stars just fill the screen because it's these little worms that live mm-hmm. in the cavern, and it's such a gorgeous film, and I uh, love it on so I'll many levels. i have to download that when I get home, because, yeah. like, it's one of the few Miyazakis I haven't seen. It's beautiful. It's, one of, they have a life-size, um, one of the robots at the Studio Ghibli Museum in mm-hmm. Japan, and that's one of the several places I want to go in Japan. Uh, recently, I watched Howl's Moving Castle for the first time because I'd never yeah. like that was the other one I hadn't seen. That and, one has its moments. Mm-hmm, I, I enjoyed it. I, I certainly love the design of the moving yeah. castle itself. And uh, right. recently online, I saw a really cool tiny toy of it about this big. That's a wind-up toy, so like you can nice. wind it up, and the little castle walks on your desk. I need it really badly. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Uh, Sapphire is the triangle, right? Um. Mm-hmm. I think so. I like that second. I like that yes. second photo that we should show the chat right up top there. That this one? one? That one. <laughs> that one's from the episode where. Uh, Secret Team? Yeah, yeah, Secret Team. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at references of Garnet right now. We pulled up the uh, her giant hands. I don't remember that. Yes, yeah, because um, when she was stretching her arms out to morph them into things to attack Amethyst and oh, uh, Pearl, right. you know, like it was oh. her. That was her secret team with uh, with Stephen right. uh, to uh, pay them back for having uh, been messing around with bubbles. Right. I have to. Yeah. Fucking kid, man. I also have to uh, watch. Batman the Animated Series as well, which I started kind of watching while I was good. Sick, but yes, mm-hmm. yeah. do it. I have a thing for stuff. Mark Hamill's uh, voice acting because poor Mark Hamill, like guy gets first of all typecast forever. Mm-hmm. Second of all, in a car accident and half his face doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And third of all, is an okay actor. I gave her ruby and sapphire swords. Nice. That's fine. That's awesome, <laughs> That's actually. Perfect. Oh, Metricos has a Mononoke tattoo. That's awesome. Nice. Um, mm. Speaking of, uh, do y'all mind if I recommend some horror do it. things? Um, off the top of my Let's head... Let's all recommend horrors. Yes. Yeah, okay, so other uh, off the top of my head, first of all, as cliched as it might seem, Stephen King has some really, really good ones. I recommend reading his short stories more than his novels because his his novels the longer space he has to write the more chances he has to um indulge in his particular weaknesses Mm -hmm. but when he condenses it down into a short story he only he just has to get to the horror so and he's a very good writer he's he's got a poetry to him um, so I recommend, first of all, though, Carrie is a legitimately wonderful novel that I lent to a boyfriend and then we broke up. And even though I gave his books back, he never gave that one back. No. Um, 
I should ask him when I live in the same city as him. But Carrie is really good. It's very well written, and it has even it. it it's not like stay awake forever scary, but it's quite well done. Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is not scary, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's in a collection called uh, Different Seasons. Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is the first of these four stories. The second one is called Apt Pupil. That one is really horrifying. That one is about a slightly sociopathic kid who discovers that his neighbor is, um, or was, a Nazi official mm -hmm. in a camp. Turned and into a movie with Ian McKellen. It was, yes. And uh, that is a genuinely horrifying thing that I had a lot of time, a lot of trouble getting through. Um, there's, and I can't remember which collection of his this one's in, because I gave the book away. It's in one of his older collections. There's a... a um, there's a short story about a surgeon who gets uh, marooned on a desert, on an island, like in the middle of nowhere. He so was in the midst of. We'll find out. Eat himself. Yep. Yeah. Sure is, and um, th I think it's called Beach Something. And that one was the one where I had to put the book down and walk away only, for a while. I only know that because I saw an interview with Stephen King where mm -hmm. he was talking about the writing process and like. He was talking about, you know, sometimes I have to do really weird things, like call ask, up my doctor yeah. and ask him how much of your own body can Could you, you consume to yeah. live on. Yeah. I was like, um, hey, we thank you. Thank you, Brad. Brad um, the best. There was a, a... Speaking of Brad, uh, I need a drink. <laughs> there was a, a, a spammer. Um... Yeah. So there was that, and he wrote a, a short story called The Jaunt, which is a science fiction story that's also really well done. So that's of Stephen King's work. That's good. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite books, period, um, and it, it goes without saying that it, it is horror. It's it's in the what's called bizarro subgenre, which it's like if you took Chuck Palahniuk's slight tendency towards weird and gross and horrifying hey, and just escalated it to its furthest logical end. Uh, that's bizarro writing. It's, you know, people going for it the weirdest thing they can possibly think. And um, so there's a bizarro short story collection by a guy named Jeremy Robert Johnson that's called Angel Dust Apocalypse. And it's one of my favorite books ever. Like, I lost my first copy and I ordered a second one, uh, and I have never let it out of my sight since. Because I know I lent it to someone, but I can't figure out you who. You gotta stop giving books out, man. I, yeah, I do. Um, I've got a story about lending. That's and, uh, but... <laughs> let me tell you about lending. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm a selfish son of a bitch. But, yeah, I, it's, it's a, uh... It's an or it's a print on demand book, so you're never going to find it in a bookstore. But it's about eighteen dollars on abebooks.com, and it is worth it if you're looking for horror that will genuinely just freak you out and also be the weirdest thing. Like, there's one short story I love called um, "Amniotic Shock in the Last Sacred Place" that I don't even know how to start describing it at all. It's just, you have to, it's called Angel Dust Apocalypse. Um, two of the stories off the top of my head that come off, one of them is about a young deaf boy who wakes up one morning uh, to find that his family's not around, um, and he's not sure Doesn't why. Sound depressing at all. And, uh, and he goes through, he has breakfast, and he notices that it's snowing out, and he goes outside to play in the snow, um, and he's he, he doesn't because I think it's because his uh, bedroom's in the lower, like in the basement or something. But uh, long oh, story short, Harry Potter, he's <laughs> long story short. He is um, playing in the nuclear fallout no! snow. <laughs> but because he's deaf and and because he was in the basement, he doesn't. Hear the he never heard the sirens, and he didn't see the flash. No. Uh, the other one, which I love, is uh, awesome. Metricos, you have to tell me. You have to like message me as you go through the stories because it's really good. The other one is uh, the first in a like mini trilogy of stuff about drugs and it's about this kid who takes a club drug that literally makes him melt. 
And it is a first-person POV account of him melting. No. Uh, Mm -mm. And it's Mm -mm. awesome. (laughs) Like, it's horrifying, but it's awesome. (laughs) So, yeah. Mm -mm. All right, Jeff, horror. Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, I would recommend uh, the original version, uh, like the. He, I think here in this, here in North America, the the series was called Record, or like R E C. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the right. the original uh, the the original Spanish version, I don't remember. I think it's like Quarantine or something like that. Um, uh, I, I I've. I found it as just rec dot. Yeah, um, yeah. the 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 original version, not the re, not the American remake, is really great. Uh, so I definitely I feel recommend like that one. Like found footage. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, uh, let's see. I really liked the very first Descent movie. Yeah. The oh Descent yeah, I've is heard really good great. things about it, but I've never uh, seen it. Yeah. Quite, quite scary, and also, to my mind, proof that they could have done Gollum as an actual live person instead of CG. Yeah. Uh, and also, really good female cast. Yeah, yeah, like, it's it, it's it's all ladies. Like, there's... Like, 100% yeah. proves that, you know, yeah. it can yeah. be done, stop. Oh, Absolutely. don't forget the other shield, Ash. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I can't draw a perfect circle, and it's head-on. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fair. Um, I might do it in post. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I have tweeted out the name of that short story collection and the author on Twitter. So blue should be Mia's Twitter yes. account because we don't have to Below spell that shit out anymore. You guys so, can find all this shit now. So you guys can find it yeah. and uh, watch it. Um, trying to think of other horror. Um, you know, I, I will 100% say the thing. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. See, I never think of the thing when I think of horror, but the thing is great. Yep, I um, love the, the thing is quite good. I'm stressing both of them. Really, like, the the prequel that just came out really? is I, fucking I have, fantastic. Oh, really, I hadn't heard anything. Well, I, when I say that. just came out, it came out in the last five yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was very skeptical, and they did a very, very, very tricky thing where they marketed it as a remake. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people were just like, "Fuck that! It's perfect." Don't yeah. Blah, 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 thing. Yeah. Um, but if you actually go see the movie, you realize that it is not a remake. It's, it's a prequel. Yeah, it tells it's the you, story of the, yeah. of the Swedish yeah, team. And all the, that, yeah, the Norwegian team. Yeah, yeah, the Norwegian team. All that, all that shit. You know, when he, you know, uh, when you watch the original one with, uh, what's his fuck? Kurt Russell. Yeah, there it is. When he's going through their uh, cabins and everything, yeah. mm-hmm. and you see, like, the axe in the wall, and, yeah, like, yeah. you know, the dead guy all frozen, blah, blah, blah. It explains to you what happened there, well, and, blah, and it does it so well. Fair enough. And it perfectly leaves off where the second one, or the, fir- the, the yeah, original the first one, one picks up, yeah, f- seamlessly, cool. like nice. to the point where they actually spliced in footage, <laughs> right? Yeah, of the dog running across right, the snow, right. and I'm yeah. like, uh, I can't, nice. like, I cannot Fair handle enough. how cool to, that is. I have to check that out because I, I I hadn't heard much good about yeah. it. Yeah, so, uh, so I love it. I absolutely uh, love it. That's, fair. that's heartening. Um. That's actually a good uh, subject, is uh, remakes that you think are on par or better <laughs> than the original. Oh, yeah, that's a good subject, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that Buster's barking at the police. Shortly. Um, <laughs> Fuck the police! I, I, I really like... Uh, I, I really like... Uh, Werner Herzog's uh, remake of... Uh, of Nelspera Yeah, thank you. I was sick that day on my... Um, because I did the vampire studies class Mm -hmm. at UVic, which is somewhat infamous that we have a vampire studies class. And I was sick that day, and I missed that one. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, and I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird, but it's cool, I dig it. Yeah, Um, I mean, Warner Herzog is generally a pretty rad guy. uh, Have you you seen... seen Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New York, New Orleans. I have not, but I, <sighs> what I was going to say is there's a really great YouTube clip. He's being interviewed by somebody outside, and he's like, and all of a sudden he like puts his hand to his stomach, and they're like, oh, what is it? And he pulls his hand away, and he's covered in blood. He's like, I appear to have been shot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's everyone's like, do you want to go to the hospital? He's like, no, 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 Consider on, like, continue on with the questions. Yeah, that's, like, that's no big, isn't. no big, I've just been... Uh, oh, and apparently he cameoed on Metalocalypse. Crazy. What? That's who? That's amazing. Uh, did was there anybody who showed up with a weird German accent? Many, but yeah. a lot of them were fake. So oh, okay. 
his kind of sounds like a fake one. Like it's it's very uh, imitatable. So imitable. Cool. Mm. You know what? They're gonna say the name of the character that he played, and I'm still gonna have no clue because yeah. I have ridiculous names. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I I don't really have a whole lot of horror recommendations because you know I don't watch a lot of horror. I mean. There are movies that I love that are technically horror. I love the very first Halloween movie. Yeah, um, which I also haven't seen. Um, Sorry, Ash. It's okay. okay. The first I, Halloween I'm not, movie I'm not is great. Super big on Halloween, but the second Halloween movie is funny in as much as it's got my favorite horror movie death of all time, where the last starfighter slips on a puddle of blood and hits his head on the floor and dies. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of funny, because, you know, these slasher films, there's so much blood, it was bound to yeah. happen sometime. Yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. collateral damage, someone slipped on a puddle of blood and dies. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I want to say, even though it's not outright a horror film, uh, Sunshine, mm. the film, is one of my favorite movies, bar none. And, yeah, even with, like, the, you split into two camps as soon as you get to the third act of that film, and there are people who are like, oh my god, it just turns into a horrible slasher, and then there are the rest of us who are like, actually, no, it's pretty well foreshadowed if you're looking for it. Um, but it also leaves me wrung out like a sponge in that the whole thing is doomed. Everything is just do like there's this feeling of just like there you are never going home again. <laughs> mm, uh, it's just so amazingly cathartic. <laughs> apparently, Werner Herzog was the voice of Ishnifis, the head of the church. Oh, of the Black Clock. he's like in every episode. Then that's crazy. Oh, neat. Oh no no no! Uh, from Doomstar. Okay, yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. There you go. Um, I did watch a lot of Herzog movies. As part of doing, um, oh, Survivor type. Thank you, Drew Greshex. You yes, really need to see Bad Lieutenant. Um, yeah, we watched a lot of uh, Herzog doing film studies because Herzog is Herzog and kind of warrants study from a film point of view. Werner Herzog directing Nicolas Cage. Oh my God! Yeah, is, which is a, yeah. That, that's what Bad Lieutenant is. It yeah. also has Chunky Val Kilmer. Awesome. I love Chunky Bell Kilmer. Awesome. Oh, yeah. and Exhibit. Awesome! <laughs> that's great. In case he hadn't got your attention. Yeah. <laughs> and that's deliberate casting. Like, Werner Herzog would just... First yeah. of all, he wouldn't know who Exhibit was, and at the same time, wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah. Because no one... You know, it, there are experiments now. We have now brought a vacuum chamber down to, like, within a billionth of absolute zero. We have, you know, the, there is, like, the the coldest place in the universe has existed on Earth. That is kind of, like, the amount of fucks that Werner Herzog has to give. <laughs> like, it approaches absolute zero to billionths of a degree. <laughs> uh, it's a... Uh... What? Hmm? Oh, it's a uh, restricted... Oh, uh... it was a... Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh... It was a... It was spam. Huzzah! It was a restrict bot. Oh yeah, it's like, hey, you should know that uh, uh, apparently it was targeting Busted. What have you done, Busted? He talked about Chunky Val Kilmer, clearly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and you're right, Val Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is amazing. Val Kilmer, it turns out, owns Twitch and uh, <laughs> will not stand yeah. for any yeah. slander yeah, on he, his he, grounds. He's all like, what's wrong with you people? The Saint was great. <laughs> It's about time for a break. It's yeah, 8.04. It really is. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to try and finish these swords up. Okay. Cool, cool. It looks really good. Um, I'm a fan. Yeah. In terms of lending things out mm. and uh, losing them, uh, briefly the story, I lend out DVDs a lot because I have a huge, huge collecting collection. I've got, like, many thousands of DVDs. Wow. So, uh... So, I, uh, Way too many DVDs. I have way too many DVDs. Uh... I, ha I, I was tallying it up the other day, and uh, I have lost, that is to say, I've lent out and never gotten them back and don't remember who has them, almost $3,000 worth of DVDs. Whoa! Uh, now, to, uh, to qualify that, many of those are... It's not that I've lost a whole lot of DVDs, it's just that a lot of the ones I've lost were very, very valuable. Like... Uh, Walt Disney Masterpiece Collection, you know, like the mm. Walt Disney Treasures. Mm. Right. There are a number of those that uh, I have right. lent out and never received back. Like, 
the Chronological Donald Volume 3 and 4. Both of those are worth almost $400 each. Jesus. Because they're, they were limited edition, and they're not reprinted, and, you know, wow. if I needed to replace that, I'd have to do it on eBay. Wow. So... Yeah, like basically, yeah. trust your friends again. Yeah, it, yeah, actually, the majority of my missing stuff are Walt Disney treasures, which is yeah. quite upsetting. I don't know who has them. Somebody stole pretty much my entire Kevin Smith collection. Yes. My uh, my tenth anniversary of Clerks. My Gross. Uh, Mall Rats. Uh, Chasing Amy. Gross. Uh, all all of them. Uh, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. All gone. Uh, well, clearly it was Buster. That's why he yes. was scared of the police. Buster. Yeah. Why would you right. do that to me? All right. We should break. Some, we should break. Someone stole my 2001, too. Mm. Recently. I don't know who. Do you want... I have it on Blu-ray. If you want it, I will give mm. it to you, because I'm probably going to purge my DVD. Absolutely, because someone stole my Blu-ray of 2001. Let's go. Well, sure. Great. All right, guys. We'll see you very shortly. Bye-bye. Ish.
get picked, and then we gotta know the arrival departure dates. Ba -da -ba. We're reading you guys' chat because yeah. we were watching the uh, Hot Pepper Gaming with Dante Bosco, and apparently you guys were too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was um, hilarious. It, yeah, I uh, very much love Hot Pepper Gaming. Somebody busted saying, I think I prefer DB from the comfort of my home. That's I, fair. <laughs> I, I have trouble watching when I'm not, like, it makes me just want to go down and, yeah. you know, hang out. I think out, it's different but, when you I, live in Victoria. Yeah, yeah I, when I, you're I, just like, it is within walking distance of my Yeah, la location. last year I had, like, the best time ever being at Desert Bus. It me was so too. much fun. Yes. Yeah. Um... I don't think we actually have solid dates for Desert Bus yet. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, I'm sad. I'm going to be there for at least a long weekend. Like, unless I have the biggest, you know, due date then ever, I will, the way that my uh, class scheduling works out, I can stretch it to a four-day weekend. Three or four-day weekend. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yes. We were talking about horror still, but uh, yeah. I'm open to suggestions as to what to draw next. <laughs> Buster's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Buster, oh my god, he has a thing. I got a thing, I got, I got a thing. I can do it, I can draw it. Um, yes, that was uh, Governor Explosion. Uh, we drew that on stream weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Yeah. I have no concept of time anymore. I... It's also available for... Uh, People who are on my Patreon, which you can now click the button below the stream. Yay! Yay! Um, uh, it's blah, blah, blah. available for high definition download for people who donate ten dollars or more. Crying alcohol friends. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And or yours and my fusion, but I think crying alcohol friends would be better. <laughs> Oh, cry out. So are yeah. we just going to be booze that's crying? Like booze bottles? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, that would work. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to draw Mia as wine. Awesome. Um, awesome. Jeff, what's your uh, booze of choice? I don't, I don't really drink very much. Like, I'm going to make you... I could be um, I, I could be a Shirley Temple. I really like Shirley Temples. Butterscotch schnapps. Oh, yeah, yeah could, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you, Night Valian. Yes, uh, bank. Oh my God, Buster! <laughs> bank some challenges, and I will. Uh, You're gonna get do banned so fast. <laughs> um, Buster is banned from this. <laughs> oh, Buster! <laughs> and Brad's go. gone now. I gotta yep. get to another window. That's <laughs> uh, exactly Zima. what he's saying. Zima. <laughs> Ooh, Zima. Um, Zima soup. So, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, so, uh, horror remakes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, or, just or, remakes, just, or just remakes. Remakes in general of things that you actually prefer to the originals, even if it's just by a little bit. Okay, so I'm not going to say that I prefer it, because I... Can or we, that you liked. Can yet. we extend this to song covers yes, as well? Yes, I'm actually going to say yes. I like them equally. Uh, but the Carrie movies, the new Carrie was oh, yeah. fucking fantastic. I heard that they were a little bit, like, that the, they made her a little bit too pretty. Someone in chat uh, uh, much further up had uh, said that it was a train wreck. So really? I, I don't know who, who it was that I said really, that, but... really, really enjoyed it. Um, it definitely doesn't have quite the same feel, but I'm going to say that it's personal preference on my part. Sure. That uh, I actually prefer... Um, the kind of like they updated it like they had to, right? Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, but, but there's goes... just certain things that you couldn't do back in the 70s yeah. when it was made, uh, without computer graphics, right? So, um, like John Travolta, <laughs> like John Travolta <laughs> had, had to be real, couldn't you couldn't CG yeah. John, John Travolta now? Um, totally. but God, there's the famous scene when she's in the shower and she yeah. gets uh, her period. Um, obviously, in the movie, you know, I'm assuming that most of you at least know the story. Like, she gets her uh, telekinesis powers when she hits puberty. So yeah. the fact that she got her period basically means that it's happening to her. Um, and the scene where they're throwing all of the, like, maxi pads and stuff <laughs> yeah. at her uh, as she's, like, screaming in terror and pain on the yeah. Uh, floor of the bathroom, it starts to rumble, and as she screams, they like 
as if it's like by her voice. Yeah. Like certain ones are like flying away from her already, but it's yeah, very yeah. subtle to the point where people are just like, "Did I see that?" Like in yeah, the bathroom. Yeah. But they couldn't do that in the seventies, you know, right. like without strings and shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I, I just got more of a sense of terror from it because there's little details of things that she's doing that they just didn't have the yeah. And there's something to be said for like the seventies, like uh, way of making horror films, like. Uh, Jaws is a really another really good example of that mm-hmm. where they make you wait. Yeah. Um, Jaws does a lot of really great stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. Making you wait. One of the things they did with their first uh, scare, or, or their first reveal of the shark, is that every scare before that had been accompanied by like an orchestral sting, and then yeah. the first time Jaws actually appears, no music nothing, nothing, at all. Yeah. That's very so, powerful. Yeah. So it take you know takes you, you by you've surprise. been conditioned that to. You know, assume that the music is going to give you that little yeah. bit of forewarning. No. Yeah. So, um, um, but uh, talking about uh, Carrie, that reminds me. Uh, Let the right one in is yes. An excellent. I didn't movie. see the remake, but I heard it was Both okay. I, I, I loved the, the original. The original. The original. Chloe, the right one in Chloe was great. Grace Moretz. Yeah. 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 She's also in Carrie. She yeah. was Carrie. Yeah. I was going to say lead role of both of them. At, uh, yeah. yeah, and Hit Girl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kick ass. Uh, she was uh, also really brilliant in Thirty Rock. Yeah, uh, really good in um, in uh, was it Five Hundred Days of Summer or is it whatever that that uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt yeah, yeah. movie she was because yeah. she yeah. De- she delivers part of the uh, the the point of the movie is like yeah. just just because you know you have these feelings for someone doesn't make them you know the answer to all your problems. I struggled with that film so much. I think seeing it while I was single and still kind of codependent on people mm-hmm. was really, really damaging. <laughs> it, it, it's it was a tough movie to see. <laughs> it's weird because like a lot of people come out of it having taken entirely the wrong thing from it, and like yes. Pastor Jordan Levitt has had to say this in numerous interviews. It's like, look at the way my character is. That's not something. the way to go. Yeah, exactly. You know, he is. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't even end well. He's starting the cycle all over again. This yeah. is not a movie with a happy ending. You know, yeah. it's not like, oh, good, now he's found the one. No, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it resonated with me because I had a lot of the same behaviors as he did. Like a lot of the same sort of rationalizations and feelings mm-hmm. and I never um I never sort of once once in every time I've had sort of a thing end it's always been the end there's never been any afterward but yeah there was uh yeah that one definitely changed the second time that I saw it but it was mm-hmm. fun fact the first thing I ever saw on Netflix because I was like oh Canadian Netflix and oh. I don't know if you guys remember but when Canadian Netflix first came Oof. to the state first came here <laughs> It was, uh, I mean, it was... Wasteland. It was fine for someone like me, who at the time was really into very, like, far... I had had far more time to watch obscure, older movies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, brilliant! It has all this stuff I like. Like, I think it had... Metropolis right away, yeah, like yeah. the silent film Metropolis right away. But my my roommate was like, "Oh, it just has '80s shit. It's awful." And so, and nowadays I use American Netflix. Like I pay yeah. an extra five dollars a month for yeah, a, a thing so that we can hack into American but Netflix. I like being Sorry, able to Netflix. switch back and forth, which yes. is nice. Like Canadian today, I was watching Avatar because has, yeah, because it's still on Canadian Netflix. I watch it at the gym. Uh, American Netflix has uh, pretty much all, or had for a while, pretty much all of Star Trek, all the series, and all the movies, whereas Canada just had the movies and none of the series, but Uh, I don't know what's going on now. So, okay, remakes that... I can't think of any films off (gasps) the top that I like. I'm sure that there are some. Um, Poltergeist. Well, I guess Dredd isn't. Poltergeist? Uh, I saw the new Poltergeist not too long ago, and... While I was watching it in the theater, there's many, many parts in the movie where I'm just like, that's really stupid. But then I remember back to the original Poltergeist. Yeah. There's so many times in that movie that I'm like, that's really stupid. Sure. And they kept in just enough of the original stuff and storyline and yeah. bits that are iconic to make it, yes, this is Poltergeist. But of course they had to change some things yeah. because mm-hmm. otherwise you know exactly what's going to happen every yeah. single time. So, um... I think that the new Poltergeist is absolutely 100% on par with the old pol- Poltergeist. They're stupid and great in completely different ways, but yeah. I think it all evens. Yeah, I read a really good essay uh, 
for those of you who want to lose, who who are interested in films on a uh, on an analytical level and want to kind of lose yourself, and if you're looking for a new website to just sink hundreds of hours into, but you'll learn something. There's a guy named Tim Brayton who runs a web blog uh, called Antagony and Ecstasy, which I will also tweet out. And he's my favorite film blogger of all time ever. Um, he's absolutely brilliant. And his writing makes me look like a, like a child who has only just mastered spelling. He is a phenomenal writer. But he did a whole bunch of essays on... Um, Hollywood uh, blockbusters year by year mm -hmm. for the past 100 years because he's he, starting in 1914 considering that is sort of the first start of Hollywood and then going to 2014 um, then Poltergeist was one of them and he was talking about well where does and it was it Tobe Hooper who directed the first one? Oh god I don't know uh, yeah, Toby Hooper. Yeah, uh, the Toby Hooper, who was the same guy yeah, who did Chainsaw Texas Master. Chainsaw um, and he was like okay so in terms of original um, in terms of the original Poltergeist where does Steven Spielberg end and Toby Hooper yeah, begin? A, a lot um, of what people talk about with that is that thank you, Spielberg, uh, essentially like ghost directed. Yeah, the, exactly. The movie, you know, like Toby so, Hooper's names on it, but it was mostly Spielberg. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Um, but in terms of songs, uh, there are a couple. There's a cover of, and this is where, and I wrote about this on my radio show website, but I don't think anybody actually read it, because um, I'm terrible at creating content that, have, you know, you have to, when you're trying to create a following, you have to write a lot of content before mm -hmm. people actually start reading it, and I gave up, but, <laughs> um, and I'm sorry for this, I'm really sorry, so sorry. The Glee cover of Safety Dance. <laughs> tightened up a lot of the like the original safety dance is pretty sparse right mm -hmm. it's very synthy and it works yeah. really really well the glee cover tightened up a lot of the composition made it a tiny bit faster so it it worked it just kind of clicked into place really well mm -hmm. and it popped it you know like it, it you know they added all the poppiness that they normally do to all their covers to it but for me, it really, really worked, and I actually like it a little bit better than the original. And I say that, again, as a music snob, no, like, it's one of my guilty pleasures I legitimately feel guilty about. But I like it a lot. Um, have you ever checked out Todd in the Shadows? I have. He's one of my favorite yeah. reviewers. Yeah, I, I, I watch him constantly. He, he yeah. did a whole episode on uh, Men Without Hats recently as yeah. part of his one-hit Wonderland. Uh, so if you haven't seen that episode, check it out. Yeah, um, it's interesting. All of these like blip reviewers who are going to have mm -hmm. to shift all their stuff back to YouTube in a lot of places. What's happening? What? Well, uh, blip.tv is a was a, uh, a video hosting hosting kind of. site that was sort of geared explicitly towards people who wanted to monetize. Okay. So they were a little bit more lax on copyright yeah. things because of the exact thing where we were discussing the. Um, uh, what was it? Where YouTube has like the bot bots bots yeah, that the bots. crawl all their and, videos um, looking for the uh, fair use. Yeah. yeah, so they were a little bit more relaxed on on the fair use thing because they had so many reviewers, mm -hmm. and they recently sent out an email to their creators of like, yeah, we're shutting this shit down. Oh, man. So um, there's I, a uh, whole bunch of people who have like hundreds of videos on Blip who have to now find a new home uh, for them. That explains a whole bunch because I've seen a lot of like Red Letter Media's videos have just suddenly popped up on YouTube that weren't there before. Yeah. They must have been using Blip as a host. Yep. I, uh, I tried to host my review show on Blip and it was there for about a month before they, they took it down hmm. uh, saying that... Uh, Blip was now moving in a new direction, and it basically my stuff wasn't professional enough for them. I was, mm. I was just like, and it, it, it kind of annoyed me at the time because I was like, but you've got all of these other content creators, and if I go back through their backlog, a lot of their stuff is way rougher than this. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, no Todd in the Shadows. Like I used to be pretty, I used to be pretty seriously into uh, that guy with the glasses reviewers, mm -hmm. and I've. 
although drifted away from it in a pretty yeah. major way. But Todd in the Shadows, I still watch. He does pop song reviews. Yeah, Ash. Yeah. Um, oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, so Todd in the Shadows, I still watch. Um, Brows held high, I still watch. Although he has yeah. wound down considerably, I think which is a shame. He's, uh, in, like he's in film yeah. school right now, and uh, he just um, doesn't have the time. And uh, those are the, basically the two, because the uh, Nostalgia Chick has retired. Oh, uh, her retired her stuff. Retired? Oh, no. She's no longer doing Nostalgia Chick stuff. She is still making videos, but yeah. she explicitly was like, yeah, Nostalgia Chick is, like, this is my last video oh, done I, with this character. Oh, I had character. no idea. That's a... Uh, really? Yeah. Well, and I understand. I mean, she felt pigeonholed for a good long while mm-hmm. into the girl version of the nostalgia yeah, critic. I always liked her stuff way better. Me too. Like I, I like. Hey bartender, I would love a refill. The nostalgia critic. I mean, some of his stuff is funny, but I mean, e- even now, like I, I watch his stuff, and I'm like, you do, you don't have a really firm grasp on film yet. You you need yeah. to take some courses because, I mean, no, if, I didn't see that Kathleen went off on Maker lately. Lately, what's Maker? I, I they bought Blip and then shut it down. I don't know the um. Yeah. Uh, Acer Blade, just listen to the part of the Glee Safety Dance cover, and while I like the tightness of it, it still lacks the sort of vocal tone and attitude of the Men Without Hats version. Yeah, it's, again, like I said, I'm. it's a guilty pleasure where I actually feel guilt about it. <laughs> Secret tunnel! Secret what? Secret tunnel! <laughs> through the mountains! Secret... <laughs> well, um... Sorry, what, so, you were saying something about... Oh, I okay, sorry. said something. Um... Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I interrupted everybody. When it comes to music, like, growing up, you know, like, like I was the fat kid at school and stuff, so I was afraid yeah, to have... Yeah, fat kid at school. Yeah. yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, Solidarity, I, uh, somehow. I, I was afraid to have musical taste, lest mm. it be yet another vector for people to use against me. I have a really good embarrassing story about so, that. Continue. <laughs> so, I rarely, rarely share my thoughts on music right. with anyone because to this day that still sticks with me because my, my buddy Jared uh, is a reviewer and uh, a mod at uh, ratemymusic.com right. or something like like he's way into music like his his CD collection is obscene like they're like 5,000 plus Buster's yeah. crying on the other side of the door oh, oh that's true. why he went through the other way only yeah. because Buster's right there yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very self conscious about uh, my musical uh, oh. my musical taste so just to preface that up front because I'm going to share my musical taste with you alright and you know please don't make fun of me um, I really like the cover of Mad World that uh <sighs> came out yeah, some years ago. Yeah, for the Donnie Darko. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like Darko that one, too. I, I, yeah, I like it. Like, I mean, it's I like good. the original... Is it Tears for Fears? Yeah. But, but, yeah, I mean, I like the original, but I don't know. I found the new no, the, one... Very good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, no, just just good. the just the kind Super of stark cool piano of it. Just wow. Just the, the simplicity of it was nice. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I really like uh, Real Big Fish's cover of Take On Me. Oh, I haven't heard that. Oh, it's, it's loads of fun. It was actually featured on the soundtrack for Basketball, of all things. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like their cover of that. Yeah. Um, well. Um, and I like lots of ukulele covers on YouTube, because I'm the dork. There was a... I can't remember who the lady was... Uh, a very popular artist did a cover of uh, Once Upon a Dream for the Maleficent soundtrack, and it's the mm. greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Nice. Um, I haven't heard that. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, um. Oh, speaking of, yeah, like, burgeoning musical tastes, when I was younger, I had very, like, I was really, really sheltered. So I got into an argument, and this is revi- um, revealing just how much of a nerd I was. So there was this girl group called M2M, because both of the girl names started with M, and they had a sound, they had a song on the Pokemon soundtrack, which wasn't the only place I knew of them, they were also on, like, YTV's hit list and stuff. Mm, I remember the hit list with Tarzan um, Dan. Yeah. Oh, oh god, YTV it was so good. Um, so anyway, but M2M, so I got into an argument with somebody on my school bus in seventh or eighth grade 
where they were talking about Eminem, and I was talking about M2M. Oh, no. And at first I thought we were talking about the same person, and then we clearly weren't, and I was like, oh, well. And then I got super dismissive of, of Eminem, and I was like, well, he swears, and he's super offensive, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, Michelle Branch is super talented, and, like, ah. Uh, now I look back and I'm just like, shut up, Mia. Stop talking. Like, Life was a lot better when I discovered when I, just like alcohol, sex, and swearing. Yeah. Like, my, I became a much cooler person <laughs> once, once, once all of that. Uh, that it's not the devil. Yeah, like all of that. And, and you know, and, and like certain other substances, like we would never do other substances. No. I don't know what me is talking I, about. <laughs> yeah, that's the demon thing. Um, <laughs> we don't even know what those are. Uh, certainly, I've never done them, but I've been around them, and those people are pretty cool, I guess. And uh, but no, once I discovered, because I was also like, I'm never, I'm not going to drink at my graduation. Like, I yeah, all that stuff, and I just I became a much cooler person once all I didn't of that drink got. My grad. I did, but only by that time I had been dumped by my high school boyfriend and was super cynical and was like, fine, I'm going to have beer. And I drank like a Budweiser I'm going to have a beer. I drank a Budweiser or I something. You rebel. I yep. first drink <laughs> when I was 23, 24, wow. around, about, around about 23, I guess. All right. Let me tell you. Uh, so I was not very popular in school. Again, I was also... A very large girl in school and uh i did lose a lot of weight during high school but that didn't really help with popularity so much mm. um but i had already made friends with uh a lovely group of people who you would later come to know as loading ready run mm. or, or most of them and they were all grades above me in high school so we did not share the same graduation so when I graduated, I had no friends to go with, nothing to do, really. Mm. And I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna go to my friggin', we call it wet grad? That's, that's the one Yeah, as opposed to, to grad, as opposed dry, to grad. dry grad. Right. Um, Which is funny, because nobody would be of age here in, no. to be well, that's grad. No, that's the thing, is that, like, you know, wet grad was something organized by the students. Right, that was yeah. Because, like, I grew but... up in Alberta, where it was entirely feasible that most of the graduates were, in fact, legal, because the drinking age there is 18. I graduated when I was 17, but everybody else yeah. was fine. They were good to go. Anyway, continue. Um, so, I found out where it was, and it was going to be held, like, <clears throat> the day after our actual graduation ceremony so mm -hmm. like it couldn't really be tied back to the actual yeah the grad. high school however our graduation ceremony i don't know if this is normal our graduation ceremony was actually like five days before school actually ended i don't so we had to go back was, to school yeah um so they held it on like the thursday and then or no they had it on like the wednesday and then what? wet grad was on thursday and it was just expected that no one was going to class on friday but I got really, really, really sick after graduation. Right. Uh, to the point where I was, like, losing my voice. So I couldn't go to wet grad. And I just barely, like, dragged my butt into class on Friday because I figured, you know, I didn't do anything fun. I might as well go to school. Yeah. It's the last five days. What the fuck are they going to do? And literally no one in my grade was at school. I, <laughs> I No one had passed along the message that you just didn't have to be at school that day. So I walked into my English class and my English teacher was just like, what are you doing here? Because <laughs> he just wanted a day of sitting and watching movies. And I'm right. like, it's English. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just going to watch movies. And I'm like, okay. So yeah. we just sat and watched movies. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. I just put together that the voice of sadness in Inside Out is Phyllis, Phyllis. Smith. From fucking The Office. Yeah. I didn't put that together. It's been that long since I've seen The Office. I'm so sad they took it off of Netflix. That's like... Uh, they have it on a... No, no, they have it on they took it off of both. Really? It off of both. I just oh, saw it. Really? On Netflix. Yeah. Maybe they put it back on. I don't know. But yeah. like, it was gone for a while because I remember going back because um, I've got uh, I've got American on this computer and Canadian in the yeah, other yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, because it was recommended to me while I was either at the gym or watching, about to watch Scrubs, so. No, I was, I was super choked, so I mean, I, I hope they put it back on, I'm gonna rewatch it 100%, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, no, nope, they don't have it on Canadian. 
You probably have it. I think they do have it on American. Um, the first, this. I'm going to say four and a half, five seasons of The Office is really good, and I stopped watching after that. It, it did have a bit of a dry spell in the transition uh, between um, Michael Scott and the new manager, yeah. but then I felt like they wrapped it up like superstar. Sure. I haven't really watched The Office because it's exactly the kind of humor that, while I like it, I can't watch it because... You're I worried. Get, you're worried that you are Michael Scott. <clears throat> no, I get embarrassed for people. Like, yes, I, I that feel, too. Okay, I, I feel embarrassment for characters in yeah. movies and on TV. Me too. Um, like I can barely watch Parks and Rec, which I love, Aww. but uh, I still like. There, there are times when Parks and Rec is happening. I'm just like, oh god, no, oh god. So that's what I. Yeah, I also had that, and I also was just terrified that I was Michael Scott. Right. Like, I'm still a little afraid that I'm Michael Scott, and I, a little less now, but for years I've always been pretty convinced that I'm only invited because they're like, we should probably be nice, I guess. Uh, no. Charm City, she is using <laughs> a uh, Wacom Cintiq. Yes. Um, and, like, props to... Uh, What's his name? Steve Carell. Like, it's a really good character, oh, yeah. but damn. Oh, so, actually, The Office. I like The American Office better than The British one. I was just about to Sorry. say, The American Office, um, it's really, really uh, loyal to The British one for the first, I'd say, five episodes. Mm -hmm. And then the characters definitely diverge quite a bit. And it becomes far less painful. And, uh, like, not that it's going to make you any more inclined to watch it, Jeff, but um, by the end of it, you absolutely adore Michael Scott. Like, he's oh, yeah, like, I, no, I yeah. liked him right from the beginning, but he's all, like... He's so awkward. Right, but yeah, the, it, the difference it's... is in the Ricky Gervais one, he's always kind of a villain. Yeah. Like, anytime <laughs> something bad happens to him, you're like, good, fuck yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love Steve Carell's performance in there, and, like, and watching him, do, like, do things that are just horrifyingly embarrassing yeah. and not realizing it, like, when he tried... And I hear this, like, I have friends that do this kind of thing, too, yeah. where, like, they do things that you should, like, when he tries to uh, recite Chris Rock's uh, yeah. stand-up material, yeah. and I'm like, you absolutely cannot Are do not that. Yeah. That is not okay. That is, yeah. there are so many reasons why it is only okay for Chris Rock to do, to do that material and not for you. Yet, I know, f I have friends that will try to, you know, recite this material to me, and I'm just like, please don't. Please don't do this. Yeah. Um, Pearl, yeah. P Pearl resonates with me a lot mm. in some ways, because she does also. There are some... But Balthazar Wiseman was sa said, I've dropped a lot of shows because I can't handle the awkward. Steven Universe almost hit that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I love The Office, but it's... There are moments I just are like... I'm like, ugh. Um, yeah. It goes for a lot of things for me. Like, I couldn't watch any of the Meet the Parents movies because of that. <sighs> um, something about Mary is a movie I've never watched. I've, I haven't really because seen that one. But it, yeah. uh, it, it, don't, it went the same way. Uh, even American Pie, to a certain extent, like, I'm yeah. just like, don't do it. No, just, any, get away from that pie. Don't American do it. Ones. What are you doing? Yeah. Stop it. Don't do it. No, your dick's you know going now. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to walk in. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. There he is. Oh, look, there's, your yeah, there's your dad. There's your yeah. dad looking at you yeah. with your dick in a pie. Are you happy now? Yeah. I'm not happy now. I'm mortified right now. It is your fault, Jason Biggs. Um, the thing that helped me was that, because I used to do this, and I used to get really anxious, because I'm an anxious person, and, um, you know, we were saying about Inside Out how, like, sadness drives the mom and anger mm -hmm. drives the dad, and, like, Mm -hmm. fear would drive me because <laughs> not because I'm afraid of everything but because I'm a naturally very anxious person I deal with anxiety a lot and it's just my natural response to everything but so like in a lot of comedies I would get I would be unable to enjoy the comedy because I was um because you know so certain comedies stem from characters should be in a place but aren't and wacky hijinks mm -hmm. ensue. And I would be sitting there being like, this isn't funny. They're going to be late for this. Yeah. They have to leave right now. Yeah. No, stop it. <laughs> you have to leave. So, like, uh, The Hangover. And I was like, you're going to be late for the wedding. You're going to be late for the wedding. You're going to yeah. be late for the wedding. You're going to be late for the wedding. And, like, couldn't enjoy it. Um, 
And it took until, again, I was watching, or I did film studies where I studied screenplay structure, and I was like, okay, the wedding doesn't exist yeah. for yeah. the purposes of this. It's just a framework. Let's enjoy the middle. But growing up, that was the thing. I was just like, no, I can't deal. They're going to be late for this thing, and they've said they're going to be late. Why is it funny? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Yay. Let's talk, because my hand hurts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there's crying booze, friends. Uh, should we geek out for a bit? Are you sure we don't want to tell more stories? We or tell... we could tell more stories. Mm -hmm. What would you guys like us yeah. to do? Cause... Do you want us to put our geek cred on display? Or... Tell uh, you embarrassing stories about stupid shit we've done. Yeah. Or times when we've really injured ourselves. Uh, which we haven't done since, like, the second stream. Yeah. I could talk about Ghostbusters for at least another they four They could talk about Star Wars, and, and I could Star just Wars. go make a sandwich. Um, <laughs> the first scene of The Incredibles wasn't that bad, because, like, there were other things happening, but... Uh, uh, we've had some requests for geeking it up, so, yeah. alright, let's geek, geek it up. It. Let's geek, geek it out. It. Let's geek just do it that out. thing where we're not actually wow. playing. Yeah, with let's, let's just... Being yeah. nerds. Yeah. I like that better because then I don't feel the anxiety of trying to yeah. compete. Mm -hmm. And then the chat can play. I, don't like I actually decided that when we play this, when we actually like have the thing or like have a party and play it, I'm gonna give everybody notepads. Because yeah. my big thing is nope. that like I yeah. need to be able to yeah. see what I'm saying. Yeah, I need to be able to write down what I'm uh, what I'm thinking of yeah. so that I can really tally good. it up. My brain All is right. my brain is not good. Ticks on from the middle. Cool, cool, cool. Are we gonna roll or just select? Uh, Let's just select. Let's okay. See. This is just going to be us naming shit, though. <laughs> like, uh, should we actually have turns? Sure, let's do it. Let's do it in turns. Yeah, sure. Then All we right. do have to roll. All right. Who would like to go first? Sure, why not? Red. Red. Oh God. I can't do this one. Four Dungeons and Dragons monsters that start with D. Let's reroll. <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> Dire, and yeah, I'm gonna dire say dire bear, dire wolf, dire anything. Yeah. Else. Dick wolf. Dick wolf. Um, no, I mean no, no, uh, no, no, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Um, yeah, that's. I gonna play be, Dungeons gonna, and Dragons, and I can't do it. I'm yeah. gonna impose that if you can't answer it, you reroll. Okay. Good call. Black. 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 Six cartoon characters from Looney Tunes. Oh, lucky. Um. I believe in you. <laughs> Um, alright, Wacko, Jacko, Dot. That's not Looney Tunes. That's anime. Oh no, that's, that's Warner. Well, uh, I mean, that's well, I mean, the same Warner company. But same company, but, okay, uh, fair enough. Looney Tunes are the classics. Okay, uh, hold on. Can you do six? Are you sure you can do six? No, one second, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know your uh, Dungeons and Dragons. See, if only Jerry yes. was here. See, I wasn't yes, I sure can. if a drow counted Do it. as a monster. Yes, I can. No. Okay. Uh, Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, yep. uh, Sylvester, yep. Tweety Bird, Grandma, and uh, Daffy Duck. There you go. Way to go. Yay! Yay! I thought I was being so clever. Oh, being yeah. like, oh, oh yeah, I, I'm the just going to bust out some Animaniacs. Yeah, like, what up? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll over I don't here. know, the Warner Brothers thing, like, they were so associated with yeah. Warner Brothers, too, right? Uh, oh my you... god, by the way, Space Jam 2, Space Electric Boogaloo. It's yeah. gonna happen. That's or exciting. Or Space Electric Jamaloo. Oh, you get to choose which color you want. Okay, okay uh, I don't so, know what the colors mean. Uh, red is uh, games. It can be video games or tabletop. Uh -huh. uh, blue is comic books. Uh, yellow is sci-fi. Solomon uh, Kane, I've had some things to drink. Green is so, yeah. uh, fantasy, and black is, uh, like, filmy nerd culture. Yellow. Okay. Six sci-fi weapons. Mm. Six sci-fi weapons. Uh, lightsaber, phaser, blaster, turbo laser, ion cannon, uh, uh, death star laser. Uh, lasers. Yeah, lots of, la lots <laughs> so of lasers. lasers. Lots of lasers. Uh, All right. That's six. Yeah, that's six. Okay. Ah! Oh, we're... I'm just taking randomly. <laughs> okay. Red. Red. Damn it. Four games with a spinner as a component. Oh. Uh, God. God, God, God. Twister. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
God, everything is dice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come on, you can do it. Fuck, dude! I'm like listing them off. I'm like dice, dice, popper, dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, does any game count? Can I say Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> sure, sure. Why sure, not? I'll give you that. Yeah, it doesn't say board games. It just says games. Um. Do you want to start and argue that it is science fantasy, not just plain old fantasy? Oh, but, no, uh, it's fine, whatever. I fucking don't know. I can't think of anything. Game of Game Life. Of life. Um, what the fuck is that? What? You never played Game of Life? <laughs> what is happening? Do you want to get out of here? I don't <laughs> no, know if I can we have, to show her the, yeah. we have to show her the, um, uh, the robot chicken Game of yeah, Life yeah. sketch once oh, we're that's, done. Oh, that is amazing. It's yeah. so good. Okay. Uh, four comic book publishers... Uh, uh Mar- is that for me? No, I just I'm I, I know this one for sure. Yeah, like but Marvel okay. DC Dark Horse Image. Yeah. That was what uh, I was gonna go with. Okay. Where are we putting here? Okay. Yay! Red. Two games with glass stones as components. Come on, I could have done that one. Glass stones? It's like any of yeah. those little mark like any game that you can use those markers in. Oh, okay. Well Magic the Gathering and, and uh the Oh god, what's its That one. Dan, it's Dan, not Dan, Mandala. Dan, Dan. Is it Mandala? Mandala does have glass yeah, stones. Yeah, so yeah. where you yeah. are yeah. skipping yeah. the different things yeah, around. That's, okay. That's Mandala. Yeah. Yay, Mandala. I am a big fan of, of image publishing, by the way. Ah, right on. Pick again. Uh I think I'm gonna go blue this time. Mancala, thank you. Oh, Mancala, Mancala. We two. play. I'm a really good at Mancala, by the way. I used to be. Two Sweet. comic books with a western theme. Uh, Jonah Hex and Lucky Luke. No, oh. I couldn't have named any of them. All right. Kaboom. Blue. Oh, I want to read one this time. Two Spider-Man movie love interests. Uh, Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane. There you yeah. go. <laughs> like, the only two? Thanks a lot, Card. You, you Listen, suck. Listen, I got boned in the last one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No, it's yours. No, it's yours. Okay. I'm really glad that there's a delay on the... Actually, yeah. Black. Black. <laughs> I got red last time. It's like, red, okay. fuck this. Jesus Christ. Harry Osborne. <laughs> Two films that take place on Halloween serials don't count. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, there's Maybe. the obvious one. Yeah. And... But you can't say Halloween 2. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not trying to... Uh... And again, I've had a bunch to drink, so... Hocus Pocus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good call! Night- yeah. Nice choice! Nightmare Before Christmas might have been a way to go, too. No, nope, that's Christmas, isn't but it? But it, no, it, it starts on Halloween. It starts on Halloween, but yeah, no. Hocus, Hocus Freaking Puzzle, which apparently is also getting a sequel Good. with Bette yeah. Midler in it. That's so, yeah. You know, there's, uh, and this has nothing to do with uh, Halloween, but a movie that takes place on Christmas that doesn't have anything to do with Christmas at all is The Black Hole. Like Disney's no, The Black Hole. It takes Hole. place on Christmas. Yeah, according yeah. to the novelization, which I've read. I read the X Men. I was going to say Trigger Treat as well. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Trigger I never saw that one. Oh, it's really good. It's like an. Oh anthology. god! And we were just talking about this too. Two films with a scene in a high school prom. Oh well, I mean, there's Carrie, obviously. <laughs> yeah. uh, Romy Michelle's oh, high school reunion has a prom scene. Yes, it, it does. Yeah. Yes. Heather's. Heather's. Ooh. Ten things I hate about you, which is <laughs> an awesome. Does film. it have teenagers in it? There's a prom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mean Girls is a good one. Yep. Uh, you've seen dead. 10 Things I Hate About You, yeah. right? Okay, good. Because otherwise... But it's been to... ages, I have to admit. It's It holds up like a boss. Oh, yeah, Back to the Future, good one. It's still really good. Yeah. Teen Wolf? Does Teen Wolf? Yeah, Teen Wolf's got a prom. It better. Basically, any dance is essentially yeah. a prom. They may give it different... I, I, I like calling it Teenage Werewolf, though. That's a great way to refer to Teen Wolf. Black again. Do you want to read that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just take them randomly. No. <laughs> Two films directed by Ivan Reitman. What? Damn. Come okay. On. Come on. Don't don't break my heart. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> I've had some to drink, and he's not a he's not a director that I followed. But I bet I could. That, that's fair. I would argue that uh, much of his success is undeserved. However, 
Okay. That said, he has made one of my favorite movies of all like time. I like that. Who? Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman. Okay. Oh, man, I know this. I know this. Come on. Up in the Air? Up in the Air. I've I never think he that. directed that Chat, one. you're cheating. Yeah, no. Chat, um, stop it. Come on, he made one of the most successful comedies of all time. Uh, it's a mockumentary. Oh, no, wait. Well, that's not the one I'm thinking of, but yes, he made a mockumentary as well. Oh, crap. Now I'm on get Christopher Guest films and I can't stop thinking about them. It's about a band. Oh, okay. He made Spinal Tap? He did not make Spinal no, Tap. No, that was Damn Christopher it. Guest, yeah. Someone in the well, chat said Guest Spinal is... Tap, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. okay, that it, must be an answer. He, he, he didn't no. make Spinal Tap. That, no, that, that was, was the guy Guest. Who did, no, Christopher Guest is just in Spinal Tap. The director of Spinal Tap uh, is uh, Rob Reiner. You're ki- Really? Yeah, huh. that's why he's in it as the director as oh, well. Oh, okay. Um, Ivan Reitman. I'm You're totally, killing me. totally You're blanking. You're killing me here. Because uh, he's not the same Reitman as... He's not He's not his son. He's not no, Jason. No, he's not Jason. So he, he did not make Juno. Nope. Jeff, yeah, just him. answer it. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Oh, shit. Meatballs. Um, yeah, see, and I was thinking, two. no, 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 but I was thinking I that he was the, the uh, that was the yeah. other Reitman, yeah. not Ivan Reitman. Yeah. Ivan Reitman. Twins. Okay, yeah, Ghostbusters, Junior. yeah, okay. That was me thinking, okay. Dave. He's, I would have let you down so hard if someone asked me who directed Ghostbusters. I yeah, no but that's idea. the thing, is that I knew that a Reitman had directed Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I thought it was the other one. Um, I know a lot about, like, movie trivia. Uh, yeah. Uh, movie trivia and, like, actors who are in it, but I yeah. know nothing about directors, composers, I, I, composers. I know a lot of them, but... Yeah. I've written okay. a long article about Ivan Reitman and his... They just filled it up, which is... Yeah, movie. just yeah, random. Okay. But, oh, he totally made Clerks <laughs> and Julie. The best in the show, Citizen Kane. Uh, I love his Citizen Kane. Two franchises in which an alien falls in love with a human. Uh, uh, Earth Girls are easy. It's good. I thought that oh, was mine. I, oh, yeah, I, it is. I'm, oh, that is yours. Yeah, I, I Okay, know. I'm sorry. That's, that's why I'll shut up. Yeah. I will shut the fuck up. <laughs> I've had too much to drink. <laughs> no, I, I want to answer this one. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, yeah it's, it's my turn. Uh, so, yeah, Earth Girls are easy. Brilliant um, movie. Let's see. Uh... Does the alien fall in love with Ripley? I think it does. <laughs> alien no, 3, definitely. No, 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 it doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. Uh, no. E.T., maybe? Does he... he no. It's not platonic really. love, no, so it's not... No, uh, okay. no, no. in love with, not loves. Okay, yeah. uh, let's say... Uh, did you like that, Buster? I'll do it again later. Um, uh, does TV shows count? It's two franchises. Uh, Starman? Sure. Jeff? Yeah? What? Oh, Steven Universe. Yeah. Uh, I was, yeah. It does say movie or yeah. franchises. It oh, says franchises. franchises. Okay, yes. There Sorry. you go. All right. I was waiting for that one. I was like, oh. come on. Oh, <laughs> oh my stepmother's right. an alien also. Yeah. Okay. Not... Good one, good one. Okay, now I'll go. Superman. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 That's so good. It should have been mine. Oh. Now you can't give me shit about Blue. Ivan Reitman. I almost forgot about Starman too, and then I didn't. Uh, two currently deceased named comic book characters. Currently deceased? Okay, that's kind of, I mean, like, if you haven't kept up with I stuff. I haven't kept up with a lot of stuff, but, I mean, I can say, like, Uncle Ben. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's currently deceased. Yep. He's currently deceased, sure. and, uh... <laughs> Thomas Wayne. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. perfect. Wolverine would have counted right now, too. Does the Joker count right now? Is he back yet? I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Blue. I want to read. I want to read. You're way down there. No, I want to take another turn. Oh, I dropped Everything is my turn. Everything's ruined. Oh, you want to read? No. Is that what you want? <laughs> we could read I it. I want to answer it. It's my turn. Me. Two mortal spouses of superheroes. Damn it! We just <laughs> <laughs> two mortal spouses of superheroes. Mm. Um, define spouse like actual yeah. married. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Although I don't think we'll we'll go so far as to say that they have to be married right now, but they have to have been married in the comics at some point. You know, okay. so like universe reboots that have switched them back to non-married status. We won't. Uh, we won't worry about that. Okay, well, um, Lois Lane. There you go, yep. that's one. And... I'm gonna... 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go out <laughs> on a limb and say, like, I'm sure that he has married Gwen Stacy at some point. It wasn't Gwen. No, no. Mary Jane? Yeah, because yeah. Gwen Stacy yeah. died. Parker. Really? Yeah, yeah that, that was the big event in Spider-Man's world is when the Green Goblin... It's, there's debate about whether he killed Mary or uh, Jane, Gwen Stacy or, or whether it was Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man saving her that killed her. Because he knocked her off a bridge and then, like, he does the red My first exposure to Spider-Man was the Spider-Man movies. So, for me, it was Mary Jane was the original, and then apparently Gwen Stacy was actually the original. I don't know. Gwen Stacy was the original, and then she got killed off, and then they brought in Mary Jane. Okay, so Mary Jane. Um, In the first Spider-Man movie with Kristen Dunst and Tommy McGuire, uh, the first scene where she's knocked off the side of the building was supposed to be the homage to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they weren't going to be Yeah, when uh, when Green Goblin drops her off the bridge, you know, make your choice. Hero, good. No, I mean, I mean, in the very first one, like that when because uh, they didn't know if they were going to make sequels. Yeah, yeah, that was the first one when yeah. he's uh, drops when, her when Goblin bridge. drops her and the and the I rail wasn't car the bridge, off the bridge. It was like the side of the building, like when she's like watching the parade. You remember and the Green oh. Goblin bombs oh, yeah, it and he saves her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. Um, um, I don't know if that that is. I heard that that was supposed to be. Like I don't the think thing. that was the homage. I think the homage is the bridge because she was knocked off a bridge. Um, was that the first died. one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because Green Goblin's only yeah. in the first one. And he, I mean, the new Green he's got, Goblin. He's got the cable car clearly, in one hand. Clearly, and I need to rewatch these movies. The, funny, I, I went to see the first Spider-Man in theaters with a bunch of my friends, like, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. and during the end scene where like Mary Jane kisses Peter Parker, and then he's like, "No, I can't be with you." And then <laughs> there's this moment of silence on the film, and someone in the audience where I was yelled out, "You idiot!" and Everyone burst out laughing. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, six parody films. Six parody films. Uh, there's Airplane. Okay. There's Spaceballs. Uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. There's the Scary Movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't do any of the other Scary Movie ones. Um. There are other in those veins, like epic movie. Yeah, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't really want to count that. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah. you can choose not to, but I think technically they do count because yeah. they're not in the same serial. Yeah, yeah, they they aren't in the same serial. I'm not gonna count. So Kay. I need another one. Um, oh, uh, Zorro the Gay Blade. Perfect. My favorite Zorro movie of all time. I've never seen it. Fair enough. It's, Fair enough. Oh, it's ridiculous. Right. It's uh, George Hamilton. We could have just named a bunch of porn. It's nine oh three. I'll oh, do one is. more. Okay. Right. See if I can redeem myself. Yellow. Damn it. <laughs> never get black. <laughs> Two television shows slash films in which a character becomes invisible. Uh, Fantastic Four and Incredibles. Perfect. <laughs> Yay! Mm. We did a thing. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool. I guess Incredibles could almost be. It, it, they are the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. They sort are the of, Fantastic yeah. Four, yeah. basically. Except for um, Flash. Being I, I don't think I would count the Incredibles as a no. parody. It's just oh, Fantastic. Galaxy Quest. Oh yeah. Hollow Man, guys. Hollow Man. Oh, no, I'm talking the about parodies. parodies. Oh, okay. Hollow Man. Yes. Oh, Hollow Man. Yeah. I saw that in theaters. Oh. I did jealous. Not. Oh, nope, so not jealous. Really. You're just jealous. I, I, no, I won really. free tickets to the premiere of Spawn. Oh. And and the soundtrack. By the way, next week Still we're going to talk about The Martian, the movie that's coming out, because I'm reading the book. Mm. It's real good. All right. uh, we're also going to talk about The Lobster at some point, as soon as it comes out, because it looks the fucking lobster? fantastic. There is a new John C. Riley movie coming out, uh, I believe it's at uh, like the Cannes Film Fest right now, mm-hmm. uh, about a universe where if you do not pr- like find a spouse and produce children by 40 or 45... They turn you into an animal and set you free in the woods. That huh. sounds amazing with yes. John C. Riley. Yes. Is it a cartoon? Nope. <laughs> sure is. Is, is he voicing a lobster or is he in no, a lobster No, he's just John C. Riley for at the first part. I assume he makes a choice of a lobster. I've seen very little of it. There's no trailer even floating I'm around. There's just clips. Fascinating. Wow. But it looks amazing. Anyway. All right. We'll Thank you that. guys for watching. Thank you. We're going to be back next Sunday, unless yep. it's 5,000 degrees in here, in which case, who knows? We'll figure it out. All of our information can be found below this video. Just cast your eyeballs um, in a downward position. And uh, that uh, fusion that I drew earlier, I'm going to post on Patreon for the $10 people, and I'll post this one for the $3 people. So if you would like a download of these, go donate it. They're super high quality. 
We will see you guys next week. Bye. Uh, give it a second. So.